Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to continue with this robot arm. It's almost completely 3D printed, it's super cheap, it uses stepper motors. I think it's a quite good arm which has a lot of potential. The first thing which I'd like to do is to change some motors and the main motor which needs to be changed is this one. Right now the motor has the torque 0.26 Newton meters, but this is uh, barely enough, so I would like to replace it with this motor, which has almost twice the torque, 0.45 Newton meters, and with this one it should be way better. And as I'm going to disassemble this robot arm, I would like to uh, take opportunity of this and also to replace the motor for the axis number two and the axis number one with these two motors. So the original motors which I installed now has the torque 0.44 Newton meters and I'm going to replace them with these two and they have the torque 0.54 Newton meters. So this is a minor increase of the torque, but yeah, I'm going to do that anyway. Also, I would like to install the Raspberry Pi just close to this robot arm, you will see. I think this should be really cool and this will simplify the usage of this robot. And so I would be able to control this robot using the joystick from the PlayStation. Yeah, let's get started. First, I dismounted the robot from the base and put it horizontal. This allowed me to take out the main electronics. This is really nice electronics. I already used it for several other projects and uh, it really works perfect. Next, I've disassembled the elbow. Fortunately, I was able to do it without desoldering limit switches and thermostats. By the way, I love the idea to have these thermostats. They protect steppers from overheating and melting 3D printed parts. After I reassembled the elbow with the new motor. And I continued with the shoulder motors. Again, it was possible to change these motors without desoldering limit switches and thermostats. I have not filmed how I reassembled this shoulder with the new motors, because it's basically the same, just in the reverse order. I have replaced the motor on the axis 3, the motor on the axis 2, and on the axis 1. And over here I'm going to install the Raspberry Pi with a small touch screen. Like this, it's going to be one unit with the computer and with the robot arm. In order to install this Raspberry Pi, I have 3D printed this piece. Uh, originally I planned it like a blue piece, but I had not enough filament, so over here it's yellow. So this piece goes like this, and over here on this two holes we're going to fix the Raspberry Pi screen with the Raspberry Pi. This is a touch screen, official touch screen for the Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi 4. This is a power converter in order to convert 24 volts needed for the robot arm to the 5 volts which is needed for the touch screen and Raspberry Pi. This is the heat sink which I'm going to use for the Raspberry Pi. These two parts in order to fix the Raspberry Pi, this is a casing for the screen, this is another casing you will see, so let's assemble all this together. Over here, the power for the touch screen, embedded nuts over here, To cool down the Raspberry Pi, I'm going to use this kind of heatsink, but I'm going to use only the top part. Before installing the heatsink on the Raspberry Pi, we should not forget to put the ribbon cable. Because over here in the heatsink there is a hole for the ribbon cable. So if you put the heatsink first, afterwards you wouldn't be able to put this ribbon. Now it's a good time to install the SD card. And now this Raspberry Pi goes like this over here. We just need to unmount these standoffs. And so the screws goes directly without standoffs. This screw here and at the back is very easy to tighten. But there is one screw here and one on the other side, which is quite tricky to tighten, but it's possible. It's made just to be possible. I also have a special Allen key which is going to help me. This connector is going to power our Raspberry Pi. It goes over here like this. Now this piece goes here, this one goes on the other side. But on this piece 
There is a hole here for the connector, for this one. And so the connector goes inside. And the connector should be glued inside over here. So I'm going just to put a little bit glue here, here, and push the connector inside. Too much glue. This piece with this one should be installed over here. For this, there is a hole here and here for the M4 screw, which will go over here and the embedded nuts should be installed here from the inside. Embedded nut is installed. These two small pieces is just to cover the cables. On this piece, there is this part which goes inside of this groove. The connector from the robot arm goes here. And somewhere here inside with the double-sided scotch, we're going to fix this power converter. So just like this, the USB cable is going outside from here. And afterwards, it's going to be connected uh, to the USB. This one goes like this, the screen. And now we need to fix the screen to this part with the, through these holes here and here with the M3 12 mm long screws. Also, there is a screw here from the bottom. So these are connectors, they're quite accessible. This is a cable from the robot arm. It can be either used with your PC in order to program the TNZ inside, or you can use it with this Raspberry Pi in order to control your robot arm. So basically, most of the time, this cable is going to be connected over here. But from time to time, when you need to change or update the firmware, you can take it out and uh, use your normal PC. The hardware assembly is finished. This looks super cool with the touch screen with the Raspberry Pi inside. And so we can write a program in order to use this touch screen to control this robot arm. And also this Raspberry Pi has a Bluetooth, so we can use a PS4 joystick to control it. Ha! I have unplugged the control of the robot and let's power up everything just to see that Raspberry Pi is working. Okay, it seems that it works. Great. Let's pair the joystick with the Raspberry Pi. Let's go to the Bluetooth, a device. So I pushed share button and afterwards PlayStation button. Now it's ready to pair. Here it's wireless controller, pair. Pairing successful. And the solid blue light on the controller confirms that it's paired. You need to do this once only when you pair first time this joystick to your Raspberry Pi. When you pay it once, afterwards it's going to connect automatically as soon as uh, you switch on the joystick and your Raspberry Pi. You can even use the joystick as a mouse. I have modified the program of the robot arm on the TNZ inside. I also put a proper program, the Python program on the Raspberry Pi. So let's connect the robot to the Raspberry Pi. The keyboard uh, we don't really need, but I will keep it here for the moment. And of course we're going to control the robot with the joystick. Now let's switch on the robot and it's going to start with the calibration. And now let me talk about sponsor of this video, Brilliant. As robots continue to advance in speed, strength and precision, it is important for humans to recognize and value the unique capabilities of our brains. One effective way to do this is by regularly engaging in the activities that challenges our cognitive abilities. And I believe the best way to do this is Brilliant.org. It offers a simple and interactive way to learn new topics in math, science, and engineering. Brilliant offers thousands of lessons with new ones being added on a monthly basis. I personally use it to learn about machine learning and especially about reinforcement learning. One of the standout features of Brilliant is ability to break down the complex subject in the smaller chunks, which is easily digestible. Additionally, Brilliant offers interactive problem-solving exercise at the end of each chapter. I also appreciate the variety of puzzles offered, as they not only challenge my cognitive abilities, but they also boost my self-esteem. It's easy to recommend the Brilliant. I really like what they are doing and I using them myself. To get started for free, go to thebrilliant.org slash scientific 
or click on the link in the description to this video. The first 200 will get 20% off from annual premium subscription. Calibration proceeds axis by axis, so first of all it's axis 5, afterwards axis 4, 3, 2 and 1. I have speeded up this video because the calibration is painfully slow. I did it on purpose in order to increase the accuracy during this calibration, but I think we can make this calibration way faster. During the calibration of the axis 2, the robot arm rotates its elbow in order to make a lower footprint a little bit. Cool, calibration is done, it took only 8 minutes. <laughs> so now I can either use the Raspberry Pi as a mouse or I can use the touch screen. And now we can try to run it with the joystick. Ooh, this is so cool. By the way, let me show you how to control it. Left stick controls axis 1 and 2, right stick controls axis 4 and 5, L2 and R2 controls elbow. I'm quite happy with the speed. At least for the manual control with the joystick, I think I don't need the faster speed than this. There is some oscillations. I run it for a couple more minutes to see how hot the motors will get. Cool, it works. Let me check the temperature of the motors. It's uh, barely hot actually. So at the elbow 31 degree, in the shoulder 30 degree, in the wrist 32. The motors are quite cold so I can increase the current on the motors even more. This is cool. I have made such piece which I can put over here and what it's doing it's turning on one of the limit switch. And in the software I made that if one of the switch is turned on, the robot arm is going to skip the calibration. So like this for the debugging I can skip this 8 minutes calibration. So in this video we have 
improve this robot arm, significantly improved this robot arm. First of all, by changing the motors, uh, we changed three, three motors, three motors out of five motors. And so right now it's uh, more powerful. There is no uh, skipping the steps. The motors are uh, quite cold. Usually they are not going hotter than uh, 30 degrees, at least without payload. This is really good. We also have installed the Raspberry Pi with the touch screen. It's kind of integrated and uh, it's all powered from the single 24 volts uh, power supply. Like this, it's very convenient and uh, very useful. You don't need to have the separate PC to run this robot. You just need to plug 24 volts, have your joystick and you can play with it. Yeah, this is really cool. I like it. There are some things which we need to improve. First of all, the program on the Raspberry Pi need to be improved. I would like to implement the, the possibility to save several points and to play the robot between these several points. This is the one thing. Uh, another thing I would like also to have the control of the speed and acceleration through the Raspberry Pi and through the joystick. Right now we only control the position. This should be not very complicated. Also, I need to improve the calibration because right now the calibration takes eight minutes and I think it's too much. I think it could be improved. Another big problem is that sometimes with some speeds you have the vibrations. I think this is because uh, first of all we have a quite high backlash in the gearboxes and also because uh, this robot arm is uh, made from the plastic, it's not super stiff. We can try to reduce the backlash at the gearboxes by reprinting all of them and printing all the gears a little bit bigger. I think this is a good thing to do. Thank you for watching this video till the end. Huge thank you to people who support me via Patreon and via YouTube channel membership. Here are their names. Thank you guys and girls, you are the best. As usual, stay safe, good luck with your projects and see you next time. And the next time we're going to test the payload. At the end effector I have attached the half kilo, 0.5 kilogram. Let's see if it can handle it. So the axis number four can handle it without problem. The axis number five of course two. Now the axis number three, this one, the elbow. Yeah, it can handle it. So this is axis number two. Yeah, no problem. Cool, half a kilo, no problem at all. And the proper real payload test will be in the next video.